How's everybody doing? My name is Mike, and today we have Miss Maya with us. She is a nine-week-old uh, Great Dane puppy, and we're going to talk a little bit about prong collars. So, prong collars, they look like this. They come in uh, uh, different sizes. This would be the largest size. This would be uh, the smallest size. As you can see, for her, we have the smallest size on her. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, what a prong collar uh, does. So, a prong collar is also known, known as a mother's bite because it replicates uh, the mother biting the back of the neck of the pup. And if you see how we actually have this prong collar on her, we have it so the prongs are only on the back side of her neck. So the prongs actually have teeth on them, right? So they have some uh, uh, teeth on the prongs and those teeth uh, actually elevate the collar when when this uh, when the chain link portion is pulled and tightened it can only tighten so much but these prongs elevate the uh, chain portion so that the trachea doesn't have an almost minimal pressure almost no pressure on the trachea so that's why I would choose to use a prong collar over a choke chain or a flat collar for instance with her, when we were using the uh, the flat collar, I'm doing this to keep her keep her feeling good, right? So um, with the uh, flat collar, I would put a leash on her, and she would immediately, for whatever reason, already at a young age, she learned, uh, you know, I don't have to walk when somebody puts a leash on. So what we did with her is uh, we actually got got her to walk in a completely different way. We used a long line. If you check out the first video we did with her, uh, we called it a natural heel where she just walked with us. We just let the leash go and let her follow us because the puppy naturally uh, wants to do that. So a prong collar is actually very safe for a dog. You're going to hear uh, a lot of different things on the internet. And yes, this collar could injure the dog if used improperly. Every picture you see of a dog being injured by a prong collar is because it was not used properly. There's two, two common mistakes people make with the prong collar, which is one, they use it as a tether, so they, 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 they're tethering the dog to something, and they're using this collar to do it. Uh, the other thing is they're leaving the collar on for such long periods of time, the dog is actually outgrowing the collar, and grow, the collar is growing in the skin of the dog. Now that can happen uh, with a flat collar. So that can that can happen with sorry, I'm making too much noise. That can happen with a, a flat collar on her. So uh, th this collar could, of course, grow into her skin if you left it on. Uh, we don't leave it on like that. And as the dog grows, you're meant to add links to the collar. That's how you avoid that problem. So anytime you see a dog with like a nasty you can tell there was prongs on them and it looks there's holes in them. It's because the dog's skin grew in to the collar. That's a very common mistake and uh, that owners make. And in fact, most people do not know how to use this prong collar. A lot of people get them and you still see the dog pulling on the collar. That's the improper way to use it. This collar should be loose on the dog at all times until she does something like uh, try not to walk. Then it's a pressure on off like that pressure on off. Right, we're replicating a bite on the back of the dog's neck. So again, that collar, there's a chain link portion here, and then there's the actual prongs that go around the back of the dog's neck. Now, when she's in heel, we turn the collar to the side, and it makes the chain link portion is from here, is from about here to here. So it's still not directly on her trachea. And even if it was on her trachea, these prongs, when you have prongs all around the back of the neck, uh, what happens is the pressure is actually dispersed. So if she has a flat collar on and she's not walking, and I'm trying to tug her to get her to walk with me, uh, all the pressure is going on her trachea or in one, one area uh, of the neck. With a collar like this, these small prongs here, that's going to evenly disperse pressure on the back of her neck. So I believe these collars are very safe. I use them with most dogs that come to me end up using a prong collar. And uh, they work uh, very well for us. You just have to use them in a specific way. You have to know how to use it. Too often we see owners who have these tools and they do not understand uh, the proper way to teach the dog to heal. If your dog doesn't know how to heal, you should not have a prong collar. 
A prong collar is meant for a dog that is trained, that knows how to heal. And uh, we often, I often say to people, it's the difference between driving a car with or without power steering. Okay, and if you've ever done that before, there is a, there's a big uh, difference. So uh, that's why I would choose to use a prong collar even on a puppy like this. Again, the reason is the first time we put a leash on her, she was refusing to walk. And we're not going to just, you know, we, we're not going to uh, physically force her with this. I can mentally get her to walk. I can just do a short tug and she will come with me. It can unlock her from, from that uh, locked position, you know. And again, it was nothing we did on the leash that made her that way. I mean, pretty sure when the owner got her just a, a few days before she came to me, she was already doing this. You know, the, the second we put a leash on her, she was uh, not walking. So this tool made it so that she can walk next to us. Uh, a 10 pound uh, Great Dane puppy is, if they're refusing to walk at this age like this, when she gets over 100 pounds, how would you get the dog to walk? So that's why we train them early. Uh, we use the tool that's going to make it easiest for the dog uh, to accomplish what we want uh, her to accomplish. So again, guys, you're going to hear a lot of people say a lot of things about prong collars. And um, most of the people, other trainers who do not like prong collars, a lot of them are using treats and they're recommending dogs get put down when they can't train them. And I run into it all the time and is uh, far too often in the market is saturated with treat trainers who are, are not uh, giving good advice and they're not properly training dogs. And unfortunately, there are far too many dogs each year who are euthanized and put in shelters because of uh, behavioral issues. So from a young puppy, we're going to use the tool that's going to be uh, work for the dog. And again, what I believe will be the healthiest for the dog and the safest uh, for the dog in the end run.